Hey everybody, welcome to another, another edition of Catch Up With Kenzo. Guys, thank you so much for coming in and hanging out with me every week. I do have kind of a big announcement. I will talk about it a little bit more throughout the stream today. But I would just like to point out, guys, that we will be going dark next week for some retrofitting, reformatting, stuff like that. Um, so I have no guests coming up this next week. But hopefully I will be coming out with some crazy new content on the Catch Up With Kenzo page. Uh, and also... There's kind of a thing going on right now. Sierra, hello, darling. Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming in. I'll give you a big old wave. Um, there is the possibility that we may be moving this to YouTube um, for a multiple two different reasons. The number one being, of course, I want to give you guys the best visual experience possible. And the challenge is that uh, Instagram Live is not necessarily giving me those options. So there might be a very big possibility we might be moving to YouTube. But first and foremost, we got to introduce our guest for the week. Our guest for the week is Wendy Huge, 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 huge in the world of uh, editing and conversations about film. And she's my little sister. Hey, bud. Hi. Hi, brother. How are you? We made it. We are now officially here again. Digital. We're in digital age. I love it. Absolutely. Great. Greg is already here. I got to turn my party over for this. Right, are we doing the are we doing the whole And she's my little sister. Hey, bud. Hi. Hi, brother. How are you? We made it. We are now officially here again. Digital. We're in digital age. I love it. Absolutely. Greg is already here. I gotta turn my party yeah. over for this. Right, are we doing the are we doing the whole like check our lighting thing right now? Is that what I'm no, doing? I just, on, to, I just do pretty lights. Cool. There. Um do me a quick favor, darling, because of the fact that our screens are split in half. Yeah. If you can put a camera down just slightly. Wonderful. Yeah. Like ooh, touching the top yeah. of frame, like the head kind of see I have huge hair, so for me my head stays in the middle of the frame. Is that better? But most of the time I can go a little higher. That's perfect. You're gorgeous. We can okay, just see cool. you over the comments. Wayne, what's up? Welcome. Thank you for joining. Wayne's wearing a Superman shirt and drinking coffee. I love it. Um, nice. So I was just telling people that I'm actually going to probably change my format this week. So you are my last guest probably on Instagram Live. And the reason I'm why so honored. I can't do anything with this format, I can't use a third-person server like an RTMP, can't do it. If I do... They like will give me a scolding and then shut me down or suspend what? me or something. We tried, yeah, yeah, we tried to do it with Discord with Tony on Wednesday, and then we found out that was a big old hassle because going from Discord to the Instagram had like a fifteen second delay and there was no audio. It was messed up. So I'm like, you know what? Screw this. I'm doing YouTube next week. We're just gonna do YouTube from now on. Yeah, you're just <laughs> so, gonna stream it directly on YouTube or Twitch. I'll stream it directly on YouTube, and then so I can do live comments and chats from YouTube, and then I'll post the video to Instagram later on that afternoon, and I nice. can format it, make it look pretty and stuff, and you know, act like I'm a professional as opposed to <laughs> you know this amateur crap. So you are as a professional. Far as well, as far as professionals go, let's talk about you because somehow or another. Oh, and when we first met, <laughs> when we first met, you were we were we were doing character work, and you were doing like managing at Universal Studios. Somehow or another, you went from that to professionally, like uh, you became a professional online critic for film and television and nerd and nerd culture. How the hell did that happen? I I don't even know. It's wild, right? It's kind of crazy because I was having a grand old time playing around with everybody. Uh, mm -hmm you know, uh, at Universal Studios on a little snowflake that we know as Whoville. Uh, yeah, it's not there anymore. Memories, I know, it's so sad. Even our, hey, our stage is gone. I think our stage is actually gone. Yeah, I think so too. I think, aren't they, uh, well, I don't know. I feel like I read somewhere that they are gonna do away with the Whoville set altogether because it's kind of, Old it's and... been busted. It's been it's busted up. It was not like made it's... to be outdoors. Yeah, like we almost. I think we probably almost all of us died from tetanus in one day there. <laughs> you know, like there's so I... much exposed steel, and it was like it's like oh look at the snowflake. Literally just one layer of paint on the outside. Yeah, the rest like... of it looks like it looks like pretty much the burning wasteland. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, no! Fallout or, or Mad Max or Resident Evil like backstage. Like if you guys could all see it, it was kind of frightening. Yeah. So. It looks great far away, but if you're like up close to the building, you're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Don't touch, you don't guys touch the paint. You guys were on that too, which is yeah. like, that was dangerous. But so how it did was, you get, it was insane. From, how did you go from playing with us into like falling in with Collider and just kind of starting this new world of, of stuff for you it was kind of insane so my uh husband 
at the time, he was really into a show that's on YouTube that was called AMC Movie Talk. And it had, like, John Campia, John Schnepp, Amy Rose Eisenbach, Dennis Zen, and Roth Cornett in the show. And it was, like, a panel discussion on all things movies. And it was movie reviews, movie news. And and it was sort of new at the time. I mean, other other platforms that did it as well. But he really enjoy the personalities that were on AMC Movie Talk. So he would watch it because it was a daily show. He would watch it all the time. And I would come home from Universal and I was like, what are you, are you watching that show? And eventually I started watching it with him. And I understood that, you know, the reason why he liked it and him and I both enjoy entertainment talk and we both enjoyed movies. So I, I understood, but he definitely geeked out more than I did as far as uh, the <laughs> show goes. And one day he saw, and I don't remember where he saw this, but they were hiring for like an admin person, very much behind the scene, assistant kind of a person to add to the team. He's like, you should totally apply. You have, you know, all this. <laughs> so wait, you did it because of dust. <laughs> you did this because of your husband? That's great. Yeah. That's he the started, point. I just noticed started... all of my things are falling over here. Like, all oh, my no. freaking panels, they're all falling off. I keep sliding my green screen over and it just keeps knocking them off. I'm sorry, my OCD just oh, kicked no. in. Keep no, going, no, no. keep talking. It's because we were talking about who, the Whoville building falling apart and now. And my background is completely falling apart. They're like, so you were, so, so it's just falling, just falling down. So it was AMC talk first. And I actually listened to that as well, too. I was a big fan of it as well with John and Dennis and all of that yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And when they transferred over to Collider, I mean, they were still sponsored by AMC. Is that correct? Were they still I semi? Think the, I think the, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember. I think the segment, like there are segments that was like a sponsored AMC segment. But sure. then it was, it was everything, everything had switched over to Collider, which is, um, everybody knows it's, it's been like a movie website that's been up for years and years and years. The editor in chief is uh, Steve Frosty Weintraub and uh, just write about, you know, movie news, entertainment news, TV, yeah. things like that. Yeah. They had their own kind of, they kind of had their own uh, programming at the yeah. time. But when you guys kind of came into it and it just, it expanded by leaps and bounds in terms of what you guys yeah. did and like talk shows, game shows, um, kind of like, almost like battle stuff, like Schmodown, like stuff, stuff like that. Like, and you guys had created these amazing personalities. And yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna kiss your butt for a little while here. I remember when you had kind of been there for a few weeks, maybe even going into a few months and you started showing up on screen and they were kind of like hitting you up and you would be, they'd switch to your desk, which was on a separate area and you'd be either fact checking or confirming or unconfirming pieces of information and stuff like that. Hello, Jonathan, by the way. Wendy, <laughs> it is nice to see you live. It's nice to see you live at all. Oh, um, thanks. So, like, how did that... You started off as an admin. Yeah. How did you get on the other side of the camera? It just... It, it's weird the things that happen. Sometimes it's just kind of like, hey, do you want to give it a try? It was a very much like a... You know, it's a type of a job for everybody that that's at Collider it's a many hats type of a job. So just because you're a writer or a producer doesn't mean you're always stuck in that role. There's a lot of flexibility where they let um, everybody kind of try their hands at various things. So it was just one of those like, hey, do you want to? And I was like, okay, because I enjoyed the show so much that I was like, yeah, and you know, I kind of I have opinions and things like that. And it really did start off as like, hey, we kind of want to have a person um, you know, keep an eye on, on the chat because the audience engagement is equally important to it's what you. we're talking about on the show. You. Yeah. So, thank so we want to get nice like to the you. audience. Oh, thank you. So that's kind of how we, it, it kind of evolved. And prior to joining the team, Dustin, my husband and I had already started our YouTube channel that was inspired by kind of the movie reviews and the movie reviewers and AMC movie talk you know, the kind of that format going around. And I also enjoyed sort of the lifestyle, like vlogging aspect of the content that's on YouTube. So sure. I wanted to kind of merge the two, which is how the movie couple was born. Even though we weren't called the movie couple in the very beginning, we did a play off of our last name, which is Zany with an S-Z-A-N-Y. And we, we called it our Zany life, but it just, it didn't work because we're not really Zany. So we're, we're just little, like, it's let's a little just... broad. It's very broad. Yeah, but the it's movie a couple broad. is, you guys are... That's exactly what you guys are. I mean, and I, I, I love having conversations with you guys about movies. It's probably one of my favorite things is that 
we we both the both of us couples me and my wife you and your husband have a huge affinity for everything nerdy and when it comes down to comics when it comes down to like star wars avengers you guys got us to that awesome avengers screening uh, oh so was, fun we're so giggly i was so giggly for that entire <laughs> thing I was like, oh, I should have just rubbed the island, just touched one of the Russos and ran back. <laughs> and then get tackled by security. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, and you're I was, out. I get him out of here. Get him out of here. Um, but that that's one of the great things about this is that, I guess, as we kind of dive deeper into movies, we start learning more about how these things are made, but also about how they get out to the public. So my next question for you is what, what has been your biggest nerdy, starstruck, geek out moment that you have dealt with in your career in Ooh, this field? In this field, <sighs> probably it's more of an embarrassing moment than a geek out moment, but it was- Well, we can share those too. That, that's so fun. Yeah, no <laughs> so it's, it's, that. two, it's two and one, and I'll give you a bonus story after this. And it's, it's being recorded for Corey posterity, Lee. so just make sure whatever you say- <laughs> I could make sure to confirm and, you know, fact check later on. Okay? You could do like, remember those like V I'm dating myself here, but those like VH ones before they were stars or whatever. Oh, or like, behind the music kind of thing. The yeah. Music. Yeah. 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 Like, like, like a little pop up bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy did not actually work at Universal Studios. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She just you snuck know? in and stole all the costumes and decided to entertain because Funko she felt the odd calling to Nathan her. Fillion. I have my Nathan Fillion story, Funko Fiend. I'll tell you guys that afterwards. Ooh, okay. But... We'll trade stories. I have a Nathan Fillion one, but I've told that one a couple of times, so I'll tell a different one. This was at Comic-Con, <laughs> and we were at the press suite for Collider. And uh, for everybody who's been to Comic-Con, whether you're press or you're, you're just going because you're an enthusiast for all things nerdy, it's wild. It's a wild ride. No one gets enough sleep. You're paying way too much for a granola bar. And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No and one has enough water. Everyone is dehydrated. Yeah, yeah. You're sweating through your cosplay. Everything is bad. Yeah. Your phone's dying. Your costume's falling apart. It's everything. <laughs> it's it's nutty. And it's just as nutty in um, any press suite, no matter how organized you make it before, you know, you hash out the plan and everything. Things can pop up last minute because things change and schedules change. And sometimes, you know, like you have this interview somewhere and then all of a sudden this other the interview that you wanted to do got shifted because, again, things change. So... One of our, uh, one of, I can't remember who it was, but somebody couldn't do the interview for, oh no, hold on. I got to look up the show real quick because I can't tell the story without telling you. You're fact checking yourself. Look at you. I'm fact tra uh, checking myself. What is the time traveling show with, okay, hold on. Oh God. Hey, Jonathan J. Garcia, I actually will answer that for you. I believe that Wendy did have a dream job at AMC Talk and Collider Movie Talk. Aww. And I will say, and I will say this for Wendy, and I think I'm 100% right. You know, I was there when she made the transition between live entertainment at Universal Studios and then went to Collider. And just seeing how happy that she was with the transition, I know it was a great thing for her in her life, too, as well. So, oh, thank you. Yeah. So sweet. Thank you for buying me time. M -G -W, <laughs> what's up? Two glass eyes. What is going on? Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. Guys, Wendy is fact checking herself right now. Uh, last night, oh, week God. How you doing? Television, Thanks television. Television. Quick, quick. Timeless. No, no, okay. The, the show is okay. called I Timeless. All right. I, I, was, I was like, what's the time traveling show? And I knew it had time in the title. I was like, time forward? Time <laughs> Time stop. after time. Time, time uh, after time. Never time. Time enough. About time. <laughs> it was so great. So <laughs> it was timeless. Sorry. We could just go on and on and on on a tangent on time. <laughs> this Extra is Extra bonuses for all the time stuff. Uh, but it was an in interview. This is us this also has time jumps. Oh, here, there it is. Continue. There it is. <laughs> but it was an interview for Timeless, and it was uh, with the stars of the show. And so one of the interviewers had something else pop, basically schedule changed, and they were trying to see who was available. They're like, hey, look, it, would, you mind, would you mind doing this one? You know, they have the trailer out here. Some inf here's information. Basically, it was just like, could you do this? And, mm -hmm. like, Comic-Con is not a time where you say no. This is a, just a... Okay, well, Jump what can I do to yes. help? Yeah, you, you have, have to be. Yeah. yeah, it's a team event. So you, you just say, okay, yes. And so I said, uh, it was both me and Dennis. And we, we obviously said, okay, yes. And we were sitting down. I'm kind of going over my notes. And one of the cast members that, were, that was in the interview was Matt Lanter, who, is, uh, one of, who was the lead for it in Timeless. And I kind of was looking down at my notes. And I had said hello to all of them already, to everybody who came into the room. 
And they all sat down and I looked down on my paper to look over notes and Matt Lanter started speaking and I look up and I went, you're Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> Before the interview started, so the camera was not rolling. But for some reason, for someone who is so in love with Star Wars and watched Clone Wars religiously. You didn't realize that he was the voice of Anakin in that. Because I'm not used to seeing their face, right? Because they're voice actors. So I, like, I, and I hadn't met him before. So I had, like, hadn't quite connected to and But I, it's like I knew it, but I didn't. So when he said something that was unrelated to anything, I think he was just talking to somebody about, like, what they were doing next. I looked up and, and the whole room went silent and then laughter. And I was like... Gosh, that was so embarrassing. And I was like, well, hi, nice to meet you. I'm a big fan of your work. <laughs> you know, as Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally interview, feel yeah. Interview was fine. And then we met again uh, backstage at the Her Universe Fashion Show in 2018. So the interview was 2017. 2018, uh, right? Yeah. Fact, fact checking myself. I think so. Most likely. Yeah. Think, yeah. Most likely. Yeah. So, uh, and I kind of was like, hey, like, you know, I, I, interviewed you and I said this he's like oh my god I remember that he goes but that was a good interview so things turned I've, out I've okay. talked about I've talked about my nerd out moment actually Jonathan J goes really what exactly what you just asked right now I am an actor and I'm a content creator um I'm I've done a bunch of national commercials a bunch of television show appearances we are Nathan Fillion stories probably mine revolves around being on tv with him but my my freak out moment my nerd out moment actually was at Waterworld I was doing Waterworld as a show, and someone said, hey, guys, Bruce Willis is in the audience. And I was like, what? Like, John McClane is in the audience? Ooh, shoot. I got all giddy, right? I got all super giggly about it. And so I came out, and I do the, the pre-show. I introduce myself to the audience. The audience talks to me, and I see him. I see him right up near the sound booth. He's sitting there with his little sunglasses on, and this kind of like Bermuda-looking kind of hat. Like, he looked like he was trying to be incognito, but it's Bruce Willis. You know what Bruce Willis was like when he's trying to be incognito do the entire show it's, it's just a it's an, another show i mean basically the way that the water will stunt show works guys is it, ha it occurs between two and seven or eight times a day so if you get used to doing it and i've been doing it for four years you do it a lot it's just another show you have to stay on your game you can't get hurt it is a stunt show so you stay 100 percent into it but you just go through it it's 20 minutes and then afterwards you come back and you greet the guests so i'm sitting there the audience is starting to file out and Bruce walks right up to me, puts out his hand, goes, hey, man, hey, that was, a, that was a really good show. And I'm like, oh, oh, thank you, Bruce. So I'm like, I'm on a first name basis with Bruce Willis. Fuck like, yeah. So I'm all giggly and stuff. And then I hear this one go, oh, my God, I know who you are. Oh, my God. And he looks at me and he goes, I got to go. And then just runs out with this one VIP guy who he's with who gives me a wave like, oh, I'm like, yeah, get out of here. So I got to shake Bruce Willis's hand and I was going to try and pull him backstage because he mm. apparently knows a bunch of the old school stunt guys and he's kind of like really good buds with a lot of them. But I didn't get the chance because he got, because as soon as I said, thanks, Bruce, some woman just went, <laughs> just flipped her head and he almost got caught, but he just got out the door just in time. And that was my giggly, like freak out moment. Um, oh my I gosh. I got to share a full day on set with Nathan Fillion and that was just... That was amazing because it was Nathan Fillion and Jonathan Silverman in the scene with me. And Jonathan Silverman is one of the two guys from Weekend at Bernie's. So all we did was talk about Weekend at Bernie's the <laughs> entire time. I didn't even get my Firefly questions in. Uh, I didn't get my James Gunn questions in. All I did was talk about Weekend at Bernie's because that was like our all three of us were laughing because he was obviously he uh, Jonathan Silverman is in his like late fifties, but Nathan Fillion and I were both teenagers and preteens when Weekend at Bernie's came out. So we were laughing about how we would watch it in the middle of the night. And it was like one of those midnight movies we used to watch. So Nathan and I have a bond about Weekend at Bernie's. Was it <laughs> Castle or was it Rook The Rookie? Uh, it was on Castle. It was on nice. Castle. I have not been on The Rookie. I really was I really was interested in jumping on The Rookie at some point down the line. Yeah. I got to be, I basically got to be a, a nerdy mad scientist on Castle for a day. So that was pretty fun. Oh, wait, that's right. Okay, I remember. Because I we have all the DVDs. Yeah, he's he he's a lovely human being. Lovely. And he oh. signed a thing for me and Ashley. He signed a, a Firefly oh. book for me and Ashley. Oh, I'm so guy. jealous. Uh, Jonathan asks if it's important to our careers to be in Los Angeles. Um, Jonathan, I'm going to tell you, man, um, Toronto and Vancouver are the only ones that are filming right now. 
for live television for big national TV shows. Um, all the CW shows are coming back. I think Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist shoots up in Vancouver. I know that there's a few things in Montana and there's a few things in Toronto. So as far as careers go, if you're in Canada, you probably have a better chance of getting on a TV show for a one-liner than we do right now. Yeah. Because they ain't going to fly us up there. That's for sure. Um, so <laughs> I got to ask you, I, I, I was kind of saving it, but I can't anymore. Okay. Do we talk about Mulan? We can talk about Mulan. Let's talk about Mulan. It's been forever. What's up? I, I, I just feel like it's been forever since I like I found out about that movie and going on the set visit and everything. You, but yeah, let's you, talk you, about you, Mulan. You went on the set, but you also got to see a previous screening, right? A, a press screening. I went, the set visit was 2018, fall of mm -hmm. 2018. And then I we was able to attend, very lucky and very honored to be um, invited to the premiere uh, in March, which was like literally the last thing that right I before. did in, 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 yeah. in a big crowd. Yeah, and people had masks on too, then some of the guests, not, not everybody. Which is understandable. But... I mean, it was definitely at the point where it was starting to get passed around, the word was getting out for it. And yeah. I'm sure that, I mean, let's be real, I'm sure a lot of large gatherings that occurred in the early part of March contributed mm -hmm. to what happened in the end of March and then going into April. Yeah. Um, when you were, when you went there for the, for the premiere and when you yeah. were on the set, did you, I mean, how did you feel about it at the time versus obviously what happens later on when you have to see the movie? I was weary about, I was so stuck on the fact that they weren't going to use the music and they weren't going to perform. I was less Because you're also a huge about, Mulan fan. You're an enormous yeah. Mulan fan. Yeah, I love oh. Mulan. And Mulan is one of those movies that was the first time I saw like a representation of myself in a film like a disney animated film that was a huge deal and i was like oh my god this is the story mulan is not a lot of people forget mulan is not a disney original story just because not disney made it an animation it, it's not because it's like cinderella and snow white those stories don't disney didn't create those stories like frozen you can say that's an original disney story right mulan and cinderella and sleeping beauty and, and pinocchio even like that's those aren't original disney stories right. but disney um a lot of people you know it's popular popular films that that people are kind of sometimes can get i guess maybe misunderstand that so that's not the case with mulan mulan's like a tale that's that's a super super old chinese tale um and my thought was that like i was less concerned about mushu not being in the film i didn't love it but i was like well okay they, they got to make something a little bit different for live action. And I thought maybe like a CGI dragon just wouldn't work as well in live action. Sometimes sure. those don't blend sure, sure. well. So I was kind of a little bit more forgiving with that. But I was really unhappy about them not using the songs because I love the songs. And I feel like these songs in the animated version really drove um, the story forward in, and showcased well, it in mean, that way. Once I got on the set visit, that was definitely the question that a lot of people had on their mind. It was like, how are you going to, you know, it's iconic. They, reflection, I'll make a man out of you, especially, is like super important to the story. How are you going to handle, you know, not using it? And the, and the way that the producer, Jason Reed, kind of explained was that they wanted to go more of a more serious angle, talking about war and its effects and, and on fa and family and honor and tradition, things like that. And he didn't, they didn't find, not he, but they didn't find that inserting a, a, a spot where the actors burst out in like a performance and a song would be this the right vibe for the angle that they wanted to go in and once okay. they explained right. that i kind of went okay but he also said that the music would be incorporated in uh still in in one way or another just that the cast wouldn't burst out in song and dance and once he said that it kind of it made me feel better about it that they still acknowledged it because they, they very, very much acknowledged, acknowledged that this was a loved film by a lot of people. It's got a huge fan base. So they were trying huge to appease a lot of fans. It was the Disney fans, the movie fans, the, the Chinese American audience, the Chinese audience and, and the Chinese like cinema, like how, you know, how the way. So it was, it was a lot of, <laughs> a lot of uh, different strategies that they were trying to make work sure. in this movie. Sure. Now, um, you were on the set and you got to do the set walkthrough. Uh, what piece were you watching or what piece did you see when you were walking to the set? We saw two different sets. The big battlefield scene. 
sure. was the one that we saw. So the part where Mulan, a spoiler alert, when she was fighting, uh, this is after the reveal. Uh, so she's got her warrior princess moment where her hair's flying down and she's already just in the red On shirt. On the horse. Yeah. yeah. Basically the one, the, the, yeah, it's, it's that. So we got to see her actually do that. Like in video, not really, not like video village because that's in a separate. That's for directors only. But for press, they set up a tent and they did set up a monitor for sure. us to kind of see what's going on in the field. And like even without you know the color correction, the editing, just the master shot of it all was fantastic. I I looked at it and I went okay. Mm -hmm. It was it gave me very much of a wuxia feel, which yes. um, those are yes. the type very of you know. Wuxia films. Yeah. yeah, and those are the type the of like, TV films shows are, and stuff. For those of you guys who don't know, Wuxia films are very much the kind of, I guess you call it the sword and stone kind of ideas uh, from the Chinese perspective, the Chinese fantasy films. Uh, yes. That also includes like Crashing Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Mm -hmm. That includes Hero, House of mm -hmm. Flying Daggers. Those are all considered the modern Wuxia films. So yes. just to clarify. Yes, just in case anybody didn't know. So those are stuff that I was really familiar with growing up in Taiwan. Those are definitely, you know, the type of films I watched um, all the time. So I was like, oh, this is the angle that we're going. Great. And we saw like all these horses, 100%. banners, everything. Like you watch the writers come in and it's the weapons and oh my God. And it was, it was just fantastic. So that was the, the big set that we spend the majority of our time. We got to walk through the costuming area. So we got to see... It was mostly the soldier's costume um, that they had because it was the battlefield scene that they were shooting. So that's what they had available for us to kind of tour. And then we did tour the uh, the camp, the soldier's camp. Cool. Yeah, and we actually and went inside one stuff. of the barracks too, huh? And this was all locally, right? This is all... This was all the on the New Zealand set. In the New Zealand set. Gotcha. Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. So... That was now, moving forward from that, mm -hmm. you saw the big set pieces. You saw everything behind the scenes. Let's go to opening night. Yeah. Did that portray, did you feel like coming into the film that you received the same opinion coming out of it? Like, did it, how did it fulfill your expectations or not? I haven't actually heard your opinion on the movie yet. Uh, well, there's a review up on the Movie Couple channel if you want to check that there out. There you go. There's the pitch. <laughs> there it is. Uh, yeah. But I... There, I had, okay, I thought the cinematography as far as landscape goes was absolutely gorgeous. And that's, that's why I, I was praying, praying, praying that this wouldn't be released on VOD because it just wouldn't show up the same at home unless you got one of those like Agreed. awesome home theater setups. 100%. It just wouldn't look as good. So there is a lot of that I, I loved. I thought the war stuff, the action stuff that they captured for the most part, with ex except for one caveat, for the most part, they captured looked really, really great. Um, the part with the witch and with the sleeves and all that stuff, I was like, yes, okay, I was living for it. The cinematography uh, and all that stuff, great. I didn't love a specific way, and very few movies get this right, where they kind of speed up and slow down, like the ramping action shots. Um, 300 is a great example. That, that's, that's, I would call ramping done correctly. Um, and a lot of films like to use it to emphasize the action and for Mulan in this case was her was to emphasize her chi. I have less of a problem. I understand people like very divided on the chi. You say what you got to say. Like I, I totally get it. People like it or they don't like it. I don't really uh, have much of a problem with that. I just didn't love the way they captured that. I would have just rather they used it just naturally or or I don't know the, the angling of it. And I don't know. Right. The techno I technology. Agree. It took me out of the film. Those moments took me out of the film when I was watching, watching, and maybe because you and I come from some stunt background, so maybe we view things like that differently. Yes. But I, I wish they kept it more raw and dirty as opposed to trying to emphasize the cheat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I personally feel as well, exactly like you said, there's a difference between the cinematography and the editing. Yes. And I feel as if that's where a lot of the challenge comes from. I, mm -hmm. I look at this movie and I came into it with a very open mind. I'm not a huge fan of the animated version. Oh, okay. Um, and, the main reason, and the main reason why is because it's just a little bit past my generation. I'm uh -huh. Aladdin. Uh, I'm, I'm Lion King, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast. That was my Disney specifically. Pocahontas is where I kind of fell off. And then Mulan <laughs> is where I fell off. That's okay. not to say anything that's, that's bad about either of those movies. What it is, though, is that I did not have a huge attachment to the animated film. Mm -hmm. So I know the songs. I know the sequences. I've seen the animated movie three to five times. But I am not going to be, like, locked in on that. 
Right. So that was never my issue uh, pre-production wise in terms of what I was worried about. I knew they would add some of the elements to it. I mean, Cinderella's not a musical. They had started right. with that. Um, I knew that they were going to be much more traditional with it. I was not happy with Aladdin and I was not happy with being the beast. Mm -hmm. So, and definitely not happy with Lion King. <laughs> right. My expectations were down here. <laughs> okay. That being said, my biggest concern about it is from the minute we started watching it, I immediately went, this is a movie being told through a white person's eyes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's very obvious. Mm -hmm. um, the, it feels as if some of it is just a little bit too much fetishization of okay. Chinese culture as uh -huh. opposed to traditionalization of Chinese culture. A lot of characterizations, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you feel it's a lot of characterizations or kind of tight casting, not necessarily full fledged character work. And I feel as if all the actors that I know that are in that, like Dewey and Ron and are such phenomenal actors. I feel like they, the, the version of the edit that they did, they cut a lot of the character work that they know that they did out. Am I allowed to ask what roles they were in? Sure. Dewey is, is Poe. Okay. Okay. And okay. Yes. Ron, Ron is the Sergeant in Arms. Char Sergeant. Uh, oh, Cannon. yes. Okay. Yeah. Ron and I did a movie together back in the day. Yeah. I, I no, love Ron. Fantastic He's one of the actors. Best. Fantastic. And of course, our, our first time on too. So we're all, we all know each other and I'm a huge fan of their work and I watch it and I feel like I'm watching an incomplete film. Because I yeah. feel as if a lot of the characterization is lost. It's an hour and 56 minutes, I think, is what it is. Mm -hmm. I would it's rather a, it's a longer one, 20, yeah. Yeah, but I still would have rather had 20 to 30 minutes more of understanding who these characters were as opposed to being kind of archetypes of those characters. Um, a part of me wonders, and not to interrupt you, a part of me wonders that they were, they felt, and I don't know because I didn't, I, I didn't ask them this um, at all, and, and y y you know, I haven't really talked to anybody on like, that side since since the movie's been out but i wonder if they didn't feel the need to flesh out the characters because we see an existing uh, uh, they exist in the animated version so they Correct. i wonder if their thought was well the fans of that movie already knows them and this is a mulan movie so we're going to focus on mulan and Correct. we're going to focus uh -huh. on the emperor yeah and I, I just wonder that but yeah you're right i would have loved to see because their performances are great like super intense i would have loved more. to see more yeah. And I feel it's also, that's one of the themes also about Mulan in the animated that they took away. I believe that by focusing on the chi so much, by focusing on this aspect of she's always added into her to be a, to be a warrior. And mm -hmm. that was kind of what her place was, even if society didn't want her to be such. Mm -hmm. Again, guys, these are spoiler alerts for Mulan, so I apologize if you guys haven't seen it yet. <laughs> um, I firmly believe that they should have, they should have focused, and this is a pitch, they should have focused more on growth. I don't believe mm -hmm. that they worked a lot on growth. Mm -hmm. I believe that it was more, it felt more like Captain Marvel. You're denying who you are, so you can't fully access your power. Kind of, right. that was the the idea of it. Uh -huh. But I firmly believe that by doing so, they take away the aspect of camaraderie that could have been highlighted more very quickly. And then it gives all those characters who had these great conversations better spotlights at the end. You have Cricket hitting his one arrow shot. Super so cool. cool. Why didn't Poe have one where he bangs people with his belly? Why didn't um, other guys have one where they would hit heads together? Do, doing the same exercises that they were doing during the BMAN montage, which there still is yeah. one guy. Then why didn't they highlight that at the end of it, the same way they did just with Cricket for that one moment? All it would have taken is 20 to 30 more seconds, and it would have given everyone a finality to their arcs to become yeah. these heroes and also to band together with her because another thing they missed was the moment where she needs them. It was, she came there, they were already fighting through, they let her through and she gets through, but it would be so much powerful if she was there and they came behind her and they and then they, they pushed out the, the, the troops to move her forward, which is what happens in the original animated film. Yeah. And I that's like what I said. Missed the points. Yeah. And that's what I said too with, in our review is that I wish we saw more of the camaraderie between her and the soldiers because there needed to be that arc of, she didn't feel like she belonged because she's this like tomboy, you know, like she made a mess of the matchmakers, you know, in the village. And now she like brought shame on and dishonor on her family and her cow. And, exactly. And coming to the camp where she was trying to, you know, do right by her family to, uh, you know, basically dress like a man to, to enter the war as her father, as her father's son. And not really finding 
kind of she belongs there either so like where does she belong and it's it's this journey that she i wanted her to explore and to finally kind of fall in with with the the rest of the soldiers they showed it a little bit they showed it a little bit and like you said i wanted more and at the end when they came to the village after you know the truth is out and, and the emperor basically gave her a blessing and she returned home i wish that instead of just the generals showing up i wish that the rest of the soldiers who fought with her were also there so that it makes it even more of like a big deal to the matchmaker who kind of fainted um was like you know like you know you said that she's you know unmatchable and she's the worst ever but look at this she's celebrated oh, she accepted people, yeah. yeah and i really would have loved that and i would have given us also if you wanted that like cherry on top to have hong hui at the end and have that side conversation with her and letting us see kind of that there is you know if you wanted the the traditional like mulan shang li ending the will you stay forever kind of a deal they could have had that moment in easily could have well. had that i really wanted to see that at the end that's something that i really I did too. about this movie and i feel as if that was one of the things that they had the opening for because yeah. when they're talking earlier on again guys spoiler sorry there's an entire scene in which all the soldiers are talking about what they look for in a woman. Yeah. And it's when they're all sitting down chatting about it. And what I would, because we never hear what Hong Fui wanted. Nope. And, th and that could have been just your moment right there for him to say something in the nature of, you never asked, no one ever heard what I wanted in a woman. And he would say, brave, loyal, strong, truth, dedication to yeah. family. And that yeah. could have just been right there. And that would have made it all come full circle because the ideas of what, a woman's role is in traditional China. I mean, Mulan stands for so much of breaking that that down. And it's one of the biggest things about her. And breaking down that system in this film is dedicated specifically to Mulan. It's given her, she's given the role of it. The witch as well is yeah. are given the roles of breaking it down. But where was where were the there's a moment to have allies in that and to give it a give it confirmation. There really wasn't. They didn't really do that as much as they could have. Even the emperor never actually says to give it the she's she's a great warrior kind of thing. He just kind of goes mm -hmm. coolly safety things. It's gently being dubbed. <laughs> weird dubbing. That, that was interesting. Dub. Was there now, was there like a reporting on why I never heard? You know, I love I love Jet Li's sweet, nice voice. Like I love the his his kind of the way he kind of sing song talks. He's very much like a happy, light voice. I would have rather had that for the Emperor's voice than having this mm. very deep, obviously dubbed voice. Like it's there's a slight off the lips, and you go, mm, that's a lot. Um, one thing that did draw me out of it in a lot of ways also was that I mean, it, aside from I mean, Donnie Yen's very passable. Uh, his English is very passable. Almost every one of the other actors is Asian American, Chinese American. Excuse me. Except for uh, Mulan and Gong Li, the witch. And they have a majority of the dialogue talking. So it is challenging when you have a majority of the cast being, a, being a, is Asian American doing the basic RP, kind of a received pronunciation Chinese. And then two of the main leads speaking with an obvious Chinese inflected accent. It kind of pulled me out a little bit too as well. I'm kind of like, if you have the differentiation, either just go Mandarin Cantonese or just go 100% Asian American and try to get everyone on the same page. You know, they had dialect coaches for it. Right, but yeah. <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, yeah. See, EJ says, I think with Mulan, they wanted to make a love letter to China. That is 100% accurate. I'll agree with that. This is a this is a movie dedicated to like the beauty of China in a lot of ways. This, this, the landscape is front and center for a lot of it. Yeah. And um, now, so I get so overall, I, I'm yeah. not going to try and push you away from it. Overall, what did you kind of feel like, like about it at the end of it? I felt like I still love the animation version of it more um and you can say it's nostalgia or whatever it may be i but i love that version um and i don't feel that this one is as great but i also want to say that it's not trying what i liked about the live action version Mulan, is that it, exactly that it wasn't trying to be like just another copy and paste version 
of an animated classic. Because if we want it, we were, it was just going to be like that, then we could just all watch the animated version, which is what I did after watching Mulan on Disney, the live action on Disney Plus. Um, I, so I, I, watched, I mean, after Lion King, I turned off Lion King halfway through and started watching the animated version instead. Because I was like, I'm seeing a shot for shot remake, basically. So <laughs> what, what good is there? What reason is there to do it? You know, like that's the justification. I mean, so I love the fact that they did different. I, yes. I completely agree, one hundred percent. My apologies yeah. for interrupting you. No, no, 100% no, no. Different. I mean, I think that that was the thing is that if they're going to go different, I wanted more different. If they yes. wanted to go darker, I wanted grittier. One of the things that someone made a mistake of saying was that they were trying to make it more. The reason why Mushu's not in it, the reason why there's no musicality, is because they wanted to make it more realistic. Right. And I think that that was. I think that was a mistake to use that word because you can't use the word realistic in the first and scene. And they put fantastical things in it. Right. Or, or, or witches, you can shape change, right. just like that. You can't, you can't have both ways. If you have right. that, then you should have a dragon in it, at the very least, instead of the phoenix idea. I like the phoenix idea. I like what it symbolizes. I like the rise yes. of it. Yeah. You could have done it with a dragon. It would have been kind of doable, at the very least. Oh, you were cutting out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, hold on. Hold wait. on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug myself. Hold on, hold on. There you are. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're, you've covered. Uh, EJ says, I still love the new Mulan. I wish it was more longer and filled some plot holes. You literally just said exactly what we were saying. Yes. Uh, I wouldn't yeah. compare this to anime classics. It's different. Again, EJ, you're on the button. 100%. That's on exactly what we were just talking about. Um, moving forward, we've been home for six months. <laughs> Everything's been pushed back. Uh, some movies have come out. We're having issues with the the budgeting. Obviously, Tenant uh, did not. I mean, regardless of how well it is with critics, did not do very well at the box office. I still haven't uh, seen it. Neither have I. Uh, New Mutants. Um, have you seen that yet? Did you? Get, you went saw it at the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Yep. It was a. Nice how was the Rose Bowl experience? First and foremost. The I you know it was actually my first drive in ever. I had never gone to a drive-in. I love the concept of a drive-in. And the second that I saw I was coming to the Rose Bowl, I was like, oh, we're going. Um, and interestingly enough, I, we booked the 430 showing without thinking about like, hold on, this sounds like, and it's a, and I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, well, why would they create these um, show times if it wouldn't work? So we actually, we showed up and it's this super bright, super bright, LCD screen and the sun was out and you could see the screens no problem I would say like visually experience I would give it like a 90% like satisfaction because because the sun was out um, some of the darker scenes didn't show up quite as well but sure, all the sure, other sure. Scenes, yeah all the, all the other scenes were perfect the sound was linked up to your um, car FM radio and it was came in crystal clear or they gave you the option to um, tune in on your phone so you can wear um, your headphones if you want to really like that's cool. bose it up. Yeah. And, that's and cool. That, that must be fun. The movie was okay. It was entertaining. It was okay. There were some some pacing editing issues that I, that I had. I had certain issues with that film, but otherwise, I mean, like Anya Taylor Joy killed it as magic. She killed it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anya Taylor Joy is, is, a, is a force. And I look forward to, I mean, if you look at that cast, I go, those are going to be big names, no matter. And then some of them already are. Uh, Jonathan J. Garcia says, it would have been so cool if Eddie Murphy's voice was in the live action of Mulan. I actually disagree with that. Um, I think it would have been distracting. I believe that uh, there is, and another spoiler, there is a cameo near the end of the mm -hmm. film that matched, that matched perfectly. That's the that's that's the handoff. I, guess. I believe that. <laughs> yeah, I went to, I went, <laughs> like that. Um, I was waiting I, for it the whole time. I was like, is this going to happen? Me too. Me happen? too. I heard about it. I was like, ah. um, <laughs> I will say that I think that Eddie Murphy might potentially be a little distracting. And then also in a movie that's full with Asian American and Chinese actors to have making even a cameo appearance as such, it might be a little bit off. If they had, if they had created a Mushu character and given it a distinctive voice, it might've been one thing, but this is, this movie's not comedy at all. Yeah, and it's not like a Robin Williams for the genie for type type of a deal. It's a, it's a no, different type of thing. It definitely is. Uh, EJ says, I wish I saw Tenet in theaters here in LA. You and me both, dude. I'm still waiting. Currently, right now, theaters are open in Orange County. And I just don't know I'm if I can here. sit in the theater breathing the same recycled air as every day. Yeah, I'm a little scared about that. Huh? 
I'm a little scared about that personally. There's no testing. It's just they do temperature checks on the way in. And even if a theater is only 30 to 40 percent full, I'm still just a little worried about that. Yeah, you, uh, Jonathan, I would I would definitely suggest you watch the live action Mulan. It is definitely an experience to watch it. And it, and I think that the relationship that people have with the animated version is completely in line with what your your perceptions are of this movie. A lot of the people who didn't like it immediately are comparing it to the animated film. And that's understandable. That's kind of what half of it is. Yeah. Now, thank you, Elliot. We'll call you Elliot from now on. Or we can call you EJ122698. You're the one. Whichever one you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's let's move on to something else uh, because we don't have movie theaters. I was going to bug you about things like Tenet, but I know you haven't watched it. I haven't um, watched it. There is, like, they're playing it at a drive, drive-in near us, but then I heard just from some of the online reviews, not, not specific to this drive-in theater, but just with the movie in general, that the audio, like, sometimes the dialogue is hard to hear, and I worry about... I kind of want to. movie like yeah. Tenet, what you need to understand every single word that is being said online so you can follow the plot, because I don't want to have like an inception it's, moment. It's a I'm Nolan like, movie. You, it's, yeah. The plot is important. Yeah. yeah. I actually went and saw Inception with a bad audio mix, yeah. and I didn't understand half of what was going on for one part of it, because the entire conversation that, uh, what's her name, Ellen Page and Leo are having, I couldn't hear what they were saying when they were discussing architecture and stuff. I couldn't yeah. get it. And I was like, Wow, that really ruined my experience. Holy crap. So I completely agree with that. Um, that being said, though, when do you think you'll feel comfortable going back into a movie theater? Uh, the first answer on my brain is when we have a vaccine that works and can be wildly distributed. But I also, it's like, who knows when that's going to be? It's not like you can create something like that overnight. We're literally still finding out new things and new results and and things like that, the new effects of this virus, like up to the date, we're just like, oh, we found this out, oh, we found this out. So I know it's no small, no small task to um, create a vaccine and then to distribute it to everybody. So it's like, kind of, uh, just to say that, it's like, I'll be waiting two years to go back to the theater. Um, I think though theaters are going to be out for me for the honestly, probably in, at least until next year, I'm gonna have to stick with PVOD and VOD and drive-ins for now, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna reevaluate in January and see how where we are. Yeah, I feel the same way about it. I mean, like I want so badly to go see something like Black Widow. I want to see, you know, all these movies that I I I, I want to see Tenant in the theater. I want to yeah. see New Mutants in the theater. Because even if a movie's questionably okay, the theater experience changes the way that you perceive a movie, especially your first experience with it. Um, and, and now that we don't have that right now, it kind of is very sad. And there were so many things to look forward to next year, even. Things like yeah. Ghostbusters, you know, Afterlife. And obviously, all we have two more Marvel movies lined up. We have all these things that we want to see as huge Marvel fans that we are. Like, we're sitting here mad about Black Widow right now, because yeah. all I want to do is watch Black Widow at this point, yeah. you know? It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, yeah, it makes, me really, it makes me really sad. I'm just looking at the slate and all these, like, big blockbuster movies that I want to see, and you already said a bunch of them. Black Widow, that's now delayed. Candyman, I really wanted to get a full theater experience. Yeah, like, exactly. Ooh, no Time to Die. Like, all these... Really great movie. Even Spiral. Even Spiral. Oh, I was intrigued yeah. by what we were doing with that. Chris Rock in a, in a Saw movie? Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like, we can't even get these movies, even during Halloween, like, we're supposed to get them. Gone. Not happening. Um, Bye, Halloween. Anakin and his angel says Nolan said in an interview he does that on purpose with the audio because he wants the viewers to feel what's happening rather than understand it. I can see that. You know, okay. actually, interesting, interesting okay. story. Chris Nolan does all of his audio mixing at the AMC Universal Studios IMAX. So he goes in for dailies uh, once a week or once every two weeks when he's on a film, and he'll come at crazy time hours. I've only seen him because I see I saw him. Heck? Because, yeah, because I was coming in at like 7 a.m., and I was walking in, and he was standing there. He was in a black suit, shirt, jacket, and he was sitting there just talking. Like, he just, he's very, very smart. Like, you know, he, does, like, he thinks he's talking, so he's like, he's like a lot of that talking and there was a surrounding group of people all just furiously writing notes down it's like uh-huh uh-huh and i think there were all the producers and stuff 
And he was just watching his dailies and he'd just probably gotten out of it. Maybe probably an hour's worth that he just watches on the IMAX there so he can get a feel of what he's doing. Because he, he says that he doesn't like doing things in the editing room, uh, watching in the editing room what he's doing. He wants to just, he'll take notes, they'll edit it, and they'll come back and he'll watch the next day. That's wow. what he likes to do. That's yeah. really interesting. That's so Isn't cool. that cool? Good to know. And look, that. movies and that we're supposed to release this year. To... A bunch of my friends who are watching too. Yeah, um, everyone's jumping in right now. Guys. I think Dustin's watching too. <laughs> oh, Dustin from the other room. Everyone's coming in. Lando waving up. What's up, bud? Um, we've got Valor is here. Al Valor says drive-ins, FTW. Love it. Um, been hearing the same thing. It's very difficult to hear. Absolutely 100% right on everybody here. Guys, we appreciate you guys so much coming in and hanging out with us. We're just going to be chatting movies for the next uh, – Oh, my gosh. It's already 4.51. We've already been talking for 50 minutes. I can't Holy crap. It. It's so fast, right? Hey, yeah. what's up, Swing Kid? Is that Dustin? Yeah. No, that is that guy. Um, <laughs> so in the last 10 minutes, I got to ask you, um, we're going to go into a theory cat ter territory. Okay. Obviously, they, they held Black Oto off because they want to have it on big screens. They want to make the most money possible with it. I also believe it might potentially have to do with the content. I think that they are doing it because there's going to be some big reveals in Black Widow that we have not learned before. Yes. And there's a lot of rumors and buzz about that going on. What do you think is the one thing that they're going to drop on us with Black Widow that we may not have known before? I think one of the things, and you can just look at the trailer and see what they've revealed and what they haven't revealed. And a lot of that is they've given us very little snippets of Taskmaster. Very little task, um, uh, very little bit of footage of him. And I think that's where... A lot of the movie, I'm hoping because I'm like so excited to see him on screen and to finally like be kind of inducted into the MCU. Um, I think there's a lot there that they are kind of holding a secret because it's going to reveal a lot, not just about what's happening in the Black Widow movie, but also perhaps things in the past. Because, you know, with Taskmaster, he can kind of imitate yeah. and kind of copy. Yeah. Him, so, so it's. And you already see him watching footages all the way back from Black Widow Iron Man 2 to kind of like pick up their fighting styles. And I was like, so how much does this person know and what are they going to tell us about him in this movie? Right, right. And is that going to be a character moving forward? Is it going to be a one-off villain? Is it going to be something more than that? The t there's been lots of talk about the technology that Taskmaster uses. we got to remember that Iron Man did the exact same countermeasure technology in Civil War that we think that ta and that's how he, there's this little camera on the on yep. the top of his mask we think that there's possibly something similar to that going on uh is it connected to friday is it connected to the same things that is happening in spider-man far from home ooh, ooh. is there a database going on right now are they collecting information from superheroes from one-on-one -on -one competitions is Taskmaster somebody from Widow's past? Is someone from our past? Is it a super soldier? We don't know any of this stuff. We don't and then, know of course, anything. also, we don't even know, like, and, and then we also know, what we do know is that, uh, what's her name? Um, oh, shoot, what's her name? The, the girl playing Yelena Belova. Oh, uh, Flor Florence Puke. Florence Puke has signed on for a multiple-time contract with, with MCU. She's awesome. I loved her in Midsommar. She's so good. And fighting with my family, she was good in. So pretty jazzed about that. Um, yeah. I'm curious to see what they're going to do with her moving forward. Is Red Guardian going to be something that is more than a one-off? I'm a huge fan of David Harbour. I love David Harbour's comedy. I love his, his ability. Rachel Weiss is in it. She's been very on the DL, too, which makes me believe, like, because it's Rachel Weiss. She's like a Ray Fiennes. No matter yeah. what, she has some kind of twist going on with her as a character. You know what I mean? She's far <laughs> too good of an actor to, to waste on like just a small side character. Um, so there's a lot of really cool stuff going on with, with Black Widow. I'm, I'm glad that, and I, like you guys said, I'm glad that they are uh, releasing it in theaters, which is great. And I'm also glad it's more of a spy thriller because my favorite MCU movie still is Captain America Winter Soldier. Like, it's still in my, it's definitely so in my good. top like, I think Avengers Infinity War had the most emotional impact on me. Yep. But I think Winter Soldier is the one that made me go, ooh, this is what Marvel movies could be. Okay. Okay. I'm in. I'm in. Yep. Um, we are only five minutes away from ending this thing because it's on a time limit. Um, Wendy, what do you want to talk about? 
What do you want to talk about? Oh, I lost your audio. Sorry, you're cutting out for me. Oh, cool. I said, what do you want to talk about? I think my Wi-Fi is going bad. Oh, what do I want to oh, talk no. about? Oh, okay. okay, YouTube channel <laughs> called The Movie Couple. And that what was that? I stream every Wednesday and Saturday um, talking about movie news and stuff like that. Really? Oh, that's the one with uh, Tom Holland, right? Tom Holland, Robert Pattinson, Pattinson, uh, uh, Jason Clark. Uh, oh my God, who else is who else is in it? Uh, Haley Bennett, Bill Scott. Oh, I love Haley. Yeah. I met Haley Bennett when she first came to LA. By the way, Haley Bennett, someone I met when she first came to LA. I had no idea she'd be eating glass and nails and stuff later on, or starring oh. with Denzel Washington or anything. So, wow. sweet girl, very sweet, very sweet girl, smart actress. Yeah. Um, so you you just saw that? Is it is it going to be on? Is it on demand? It's on Netflix. So if you're a Netflix subscriber, it's already on your, on your queue out there. Um, Netflix is totally killing the game right now. They're right, and and like I think Ratchet just dropped the one with Sarah Paulson on Nurse Ratchet. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. gonna watch that. Uh, and then I still need to finish Curse. I think I'm still on episode six, so I need to finish it. And of course, all the K drama. All the K. It's like endless K drama. That's oh yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. Was it Terrace House? Is that the one that uh, I think you guys Terrace watched? House, uh, yeah, I, I'm caught up on Terrace House, and I don't think they're coming back because of the tragedy that happened with Hannah. Uh, mm -hmm. But I am currently watching. I just finished Crash Landing on You. I am currently, I think, two episodes from the finale, The King Eternal Monarch with Mimi Ho, and then for after that, I think I'm going to watch It's Okay to Not Be Okay. Or it's not okay to be okay. <laughs> something like that. It's amazing how much content there still is for us to watch. Even if we've been at home for six months, there's so much stuff that we can do. And it's so great to have that. Um, yeah. With that, we are getting into our last minute and a half. Wow, it's crazy. Um, uh, what is the one thing that you've picked up during this Safer at Home that you never thought you'd be doing in your life? During the during during quarantine. Mm -hmm. Um, I would be creative with my culinary skills at home because I think, and I didn't realize I was doing this, but because when you worked a like ten to six ish job or nine to five, if you want to call it the traditional ways. Sometimes you get so tired and you get lazy and you just do the drive throughs <laughs> or you postmate things and then you yeah. it and it makes it feel like it's homemade and you're like, okay, and then you only cook on the weekends. Well, because of quarantine, I just, I was like, okay, we're going to the store. I'm not eating out. I will buy from small, small you know. Oh man, all of that cut out. Wendy, you're cutting out like crazy. Um, that's the way things go, guys. The internet is crazy sometimes. Oh, I'm back. I think you're kind of talking to yourself. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's still happening. It's okay. I'm just going to keep it's talking. It's okay. Internet, internet's crazy. Internet's crazy. Um, I'm going to start getting the countdown here in five seconds. Guys, thank you guys so much for hanging out for the catch up with Kenzo. My guest has been Wendy Lee Zaney. You could find her at The Movie Couple. Is that correct? And also at her name on Instagram. Uh, the movie couple's also on YouTube. Is that right as well, too? It is. It is on YouTube. So, guys, be sure to follow uh, follow her in everything you possibly can. Elliot, pleasure to meet you, too. Yes, Wendy, follow everything that she does because she's awesome, amazing. I miss you, sister. I miss you so much. I miss um, you. We'll get, maybe we can go see a movie together at some point. I don't know. Rent a theater. Put the cars next to each other at the drive We can put the cars six feet away from each other and talk out the windows to each other. I'm so excited. I'm actually kind of excited by that idea. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Love you. Miss you. Bye, guys. Thank you for tuning in. See you next week or soon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye,